Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Every song that I sing, I'll sing to you, and I hope I can bring you a smile or two. Mom Olive Soap, your beauty hope for a lovelier, more beautiful complexion, brings you a day in the life of Dennis Day. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, Charles Smith is written by Frank Galen and features the popular Palm Olive singing star, Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing his RCA Victor recording of Hand Holding Music. I like mountain music, I like your simple tune. I like it cause my tonsils get the hang of it so soon. When I get my nerve up, I'm out to take a chance. With mountain music back of me, I'm ready for romance. Give me a hand, hold the music, if it feel like a club. Give me a hand, hold the music, with stars and moon above. Give me something with a swing, give me something I can sing. Give me a hand, hold the music, to start me making love. I've seen it work in barnyards, no kidding, that's a fact. The animals hear music and you should see how they act. The pigs start cutting capers, romance and all his sows. And bulls get very tender when they cuddle up to cows. Give me a hand, hold the music, if it's me like a glove. Give me a hand, hold the music, which are the moon above. Give me something with a swing, give me something I can sing. Give me a hand, hold the music, to start me making love. Uncle Fudd was 90, he married seven times. He didn't like the women, but he sure loved wedding chimes. At 89, he wed a gal, and she was 28. And every time he danced with her, he lost his upper place. Give me a hand, hold the music, if it's me like a glove. Give me a hand, hold the music, with stars and moon above. Give me something with a swing, give me something I can sing. Give me a hand, hold the music, yes, hand, hold the music, to start me making love. Doctors prove you, too, may have a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, ladies, this is not just a promise, not just a claim, but actual proof. For 36 leading skin specialists prove that a new method of cleansing with palm olive soap, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two out of three women. These tests were made on 1,285 women of all ages, with all types of skin, many with complexion problems. These doctors' reports showed astonishing improvements. Smoother, fresher complexion, less oiliness, new softness for dry skin, fewer tiny blemishes, incipient blackheads, complexions more radiant, glowing. Here's the easy method. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time, for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's rich, beautifying lather onto your skin like you would a cream. Then rinse. That's all. It's true. You, too, may have a lovelier complexion in 14 days using palm olive soap, regardless of your age, regardless of your skin type. Start your palm olive facials today. See what palm olive soap can do for your complexion in just 14 days. And for tub or shower, for loveliness all over, get new, big, thrifty, bath size palm olive. Well, for many of us, it's still good old vacation time. For the Anderson family, for instance, with whom our young hero, Dennis Day, boards. Sad to relate, however, the Anderson vacation fund was a bit low this year, and Mr. and Mrs. Anderson were forced to decide that only the hard-working breadwinner of the family could take a vacation. So she did. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson took Mildred up to the lake for two weeks, leaving her husband and our hero in charge of the house. And as we look in on that rather lonely bachelor household now, we find Dennis rushing excitedly into the kitchen, eagerly clutching two letters. Oh, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Easy, son, easy. You want to make my cake fall? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But look, we got letters from the girls. I open mine. Mildred says they're coming home. Oh, my, that is good news. Not that we've been living badly, but I must say I've missed my wife's liver and her leg of lamb. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I've missed every bit of Mildred. Yes, no doubt. <laughs> uh, let's see Poopsie's letter, would you? Oh, here you are. Gee, they must have had a swell vacation, huh? Yeah. Oh, look, Poopsie's enclosed a snapshot. Huh? See, it shows her holding a great big fish. Gee, did she catch that herself? Yeah. Ornery looking customer, huh? Yeah, and the fish looks pretty mean, too. <laughs> I meant the fish. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what's Mildred got to say in her letter? Gee, I'm kind of worried. She says she spends a lot of time with somebody named Terry, the swimming instructor. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry, Dennis. They're probably the only young people up there, that's all. Naturally, they're drawn together. After all, he's a boy and she's a girl. I know, but that's the stuff couples are made of. <laughs> Now, Dennis. Gosh, I'm scared. I should have known this would have happened if she went away without me. The minute my back is turned, she's necking with some big handsome Adonis. Oh, don't be silly. She isn't necking with him. Oh, no? Then how come it says right here, Terry's backstroke is the most thrilling thing imaginable? That's a swimming stroke, Dennis. Oh, what's the difference? She's out of my life forever. I always knew I'd lose her. That Mademoiselle de la Tour was right. Who? Oh? oh, don't you remember that article we saw in the paper yesterday? That Parisian modiste who just came to town. She said American men know nothing of love. Said we were cold and completely ignorant of the technique of romance. Oh, that. Oh, uh, Dennis, believe me, every visitor from France has said that same thing. Well, maybe some American men are cold and know nothing of love. But for every one of them, there are ten powerhouses of passion like me. <laughs> What does this French dame know about men, anyhow? Why, she isn't even married herself. All she has is a couple of French poodles. Yeah, but I'll bet every American dog in town is dying to meet them. <laughs> now, don't be silly. Well, I can tell you more about the art of romance than any French woman can. You can? Certainly. When Mildred arrives tomorrow, just give her a dose of her own medicine. Tell her that you've been going out with another girl. Me? But you know I never go out with... Invent one. Make Mildred as jealous as she's made you with this Terry. That'll bring her around. By golly, I'll bet you're right. I'll do it. After all, as an old saying, what, what the sauce for the sauce can take a gander at the goose. <laughs> I, I may not have that word for word, but you know what I mean. Sure, I do. <clears throat> and it'll work, too. Now, uh, uh, do I know my stuff or don't I? Oh, Mr. Anderson, I gotta hand it to you. You're the equal of any French woman alive, despite the difference in your language and construction. <laughs> Wonderful to be getting home again. Yes, I must admit it is, Mildred. It'll be so good to see Daddy, won't it? Yes, I miss that cute little rascal. Mm, no more than I miss Dennis, I bet. Dennis, that word again. <laughs> Mildred, don't you know why I took you up to the lake with me? I was hoping you'd meet some nice boy with some prospects and forget that unripe Barry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Mother. But you, you never even talked to another boy. You spent every waking moment with that Terry girl, the swimming instructor. But I like being with Terry, Mother. I could talk to her about Dennis. Dennis, always Dennis. What on earth do you see in that boy, anyhow? Oh, you just don't know him, Mother. He's so good and warm and restful and relaxing. So is a Turkish bath. <laughs> but you don't fall in love with it. Oh, well, I guess I'll never understand. Oh, look, there they are, Mr. Anderson. The car's pulling up in front of the house. Okay. Now, have you got your story all set? Oh, you bet. I got a beauty. Good. Oh, here comes Popsy. Mildred must be putting the car away. Herbert! Sugar nose. <laughs> Shall say. Well, don't you stand there. Pick me up and crush my tempting lips to your great big pucker. <laughs> Oh, Molten Mouth Mama, you rang your ding-dong daddy's bell. <laughs> and how have you been, Dennis? Oh, just fine, Mrs. Anderson. Uh. <laughs> well, come along, Herbert, and help me unpack. Coming, fudge face. Uh, uh, Dennis, don't forget your plan now. Oh, don't worry. I know what to do. Okay, see you later. Oh, gosh, this has just got to work. If it doesn't, I... Uh-oh. Hey, Mildred comes now. Dennis, darling, I'm back. Oh, you've been away? <laughs> been away? Dennis, what's the matter with you? Do 
Didn't you miss me? Oh, sure. Days, that is. Of course, nights I was kind of busy. Busy? Yeah, I've been out every night with a voluptuous, shapely blonde. Dennis, you weren't. Uh-huh. What's more, it was a girl. <laughs> Dennis. Well, you know how it is. When the cat's away, the mouse likes to squeak it up a little bit. <laughs> We've had some wild parties, all right. Sometimes I didn't get home till 11.30 or quarter to 12. <laughs> you know, once I even drank champagne from a slipper. What? Yeah, and boy, did I get loaded. She's got the biggest feet in town. <laughs> Girl, what's her name? Henrietta. She's got millions. Convertible Cadillacs by the dozens, yachts, mansions, furs, diamonds. And just where did you run across such a girl? Well, we were in the same line down at the unemployment insurance office. <laughs> the unemployment insurance office? Yep. Dennis Day, I'm beginning to smell a rat. It's me. I've been very untrue to you. <laughs> I don't believe one single word of that silly story. You made the whole thing up. Me? I come I'm home that... after two weeks away and you trump up some ridiculous story to convince me you're a big shot wolf. Why, a three-year-old boy knows more about handling women than you do. You're tactless and inconsiderate, and, and yet I never want to speak to you again. Oh, Mildred, wait, let me... Ex- oh, my gosh, now what have I done? Oh, dear. Judging from Mildred's expression just now, my advice kind of backfired, huh? All over me. <laughs> no use, Mr. Anderson, that Mademoiselle de la Tour was right about us American men. If I could only talk to her and get some first-hand advice about romance... Yeah, maybe that would help. Oh, but how could I... An important woman like that wouldn't see me. I couldn't even get past the desk clerk. Say, wait a minute. Huh? Doesn't your spinster friend Ruth Baker work on the hotel switchboard? Well, maybe she can figure out some way of sneaking you up. Ruth Baker? Oh, but I'm scared to go near her. She's always making passes at me. Oh, don't be silly. Ruth Baker's practically in her second childhood. Yeah, and I'm her favorite tinker toy. <laughs> your only hope if you want to see Mademoiselle de la Tour. Besides, maybe Ruth has changed. No, it'll be the same old thing. Every time she sees me, her eyes light up and her living room gets dark. <laughs> Call me dead game day. Here I go. We'll continue this day in the life of Dennis Day in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's Dennis to sing My One and Only Highland Fling. The man you dangle on the string I was only waiting For the real, real thing Oh, I danced each girl In the twist and twirl No one would do And I went my way Till the fatal day In the fling I was flung with you Gay as the lord and happy as the king The years I'll weather In the home or on the heather With my one and only hand Well, in an effort to win back Mildred, the girl of his dreams, our hero is seeking the advice of one Mademoiselle de la Tour, a Parisian modiste, who has made a statement to the effect that American men know nothing of love. But to get to see her is a problem, and Dennis hopes to solve it through Ruth Baker, a friendly spinster who runs the switchboard at the hotel and who would like to be even friendlier with Dennis. We find him now ringing Miss Baker's doorbell. Your wrapper. I mean, your coat. <laughs> oh, you look so cute. Wait, I'll open the window. Oh, that's okay. It isn't warm in here. It is where I'm standing. <laughs> Come on, sit down, dear boy, right here on the couch. But it isn't a couch, it's a chair, and you're already in it. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm an obvious one, huh? <laughs> Miss Baker, haven't you learned by now that I can never return your love? Don't return it, honey. Use it. Use it. <laughs> Please, Miss 
Baker, this is serious. Well, what is it this time? Miss Mildred, she's thrown me over for some guy named Terry. Oh? Uh? But I'm going to win her back. Oh. <laughs> and the only way I can do it is by talking to Mademoiselle Delatour. Mademoiselle Delatour? Yeah. You mean that woman with the French poodles who's stopping at the hotel? What? American men don't know anything about romance. Now, if I can get her to tell me what's wrong with my technique... Why bother with her? Just kiss me a couple of times, and I'll give you a detailed criticism the minute I regain consciousness. Excuse <laughs> me, Baker, this is a matter of life and death to me. You've just got to help me see this Mademoiselle Delatour. Well, she hasn't been seeing anyone at all, but... Maybe just for you, I can figure something out. Oh, Miss Baker, can you really? Sure. I'll get hold of a bellhop's uniform. Yes. You can put it on and take her up to my water or something. Oh, boy, that's perfect. Oh, gosh, Miss Baker, you're the most wonderful woman on earth. I am? Yes, and what's more, you're, you're beautiful, too. Oh, I am not. <laughs> you are, and you're charming. Little me? And desirable. Wow! <laughs> Oh, of course I do. Gee, you're terrific, and someday you're going to make some lucky man a wonderful mother. <laughs> Why do I race my motor? Don't I always come to a roadblock? <laughs> Andre? No, ma'am, bellboy. <laughs> nope, ice water. Eh? Well, what is this? You do not have any ice water. I know, you see, I'm really not a bellboy, mademoiselle. I said that because I just have to see you. To see me? Yes, ma'am. You're a big expert on love, and, well, my girlfriend's in love with another man, and I just got to win her back, so I thought if you'd advise me... Ah, so, I see. Toujours l'amour? No, thanks. I just as leave stand. <laughs> yes. So, this is an affair of the heart, eh? Well, I shall do my best for you. Oh, thank you, mademoiselle. How old are you, mon enfant? Twenty-two. So... Now, when did you first realize that girls were attractive? I mean, when did the moment come when you preferred to be with a girl instead of playing ball? I expected any minute. <laughs> no wonder American women need such strong perfume. Pardon? Have you never kissed a girl, my friend? Oh, yes, ma'am. Ah, that first kiss. How did it come about? Well, we were both eating the same Tootsie Roll, and when we got to the middle, it happened. <laughs> progress, yes? Oh, yes, ma'am. Hand-holding, footsie, spin the bottle. I've lived. <laughs> well, these terms I do not know. But come, the best way to learn is to ask. Yeah? We will sit on the sofa, like this. Yeah? You will, and you will show me your technique. We are alone on the sofa, yes? Yes. Now, you reach over and turn the... Go! Well, isn't that kind of hard on the eyes? The print in those comic books is pretty small. <laughs> no, no, no. This is not the time to read. You speak to her of love. You recite to her some delicate, enchanting sonnet. Oh, poetry. Yes. And with deep feeling. With passion. Now. Okay. Hickory dickory dock, the mouth. <laughs> no. no? Monsieur, I am afraid we have reached the end of our conversation. Romantically, you are what they call the, the poo-out. Goodbye. But wait, aren't you going to tell me how I can hold my girl? Your only hope is a half-Nelson. <laughs> the door is right here. But, Mademoiselle, I didn't learn about love. I'm not... Come in. Good afternoon, Miss De La Tour. I'm Johnson of the Weaverville Gazette. I'm here for that interview you promised our paper on your hobby. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, boy, can I stay and listen? If I could hear the interview, Please. I'd find out that... Leave us, monsieur. But, ma'am, I... Hey, the fire escape. Pardon? Uh, <laughs> nothing. So long, Mademoiselle. Now then, Monsieur Johnson. Well, uh, Miss De La Tour, my editor tells me your hobby is the care and training of French poodles. Oh, yes, indeed. My Rene has one over 20 blue ribbons, you know. Yes, yeah, so I hear. Now, would you tell us just how you trained her? Of course. Now, first of all, I treat her... Oh, uh, pardon me. Did you just hear a window open off the fire escape in the other room? Oh, probably the maid. Oh, yes. Well, uh, please continue, mademoiselle. Well, first of all, she must always be shown who is boss. Mm -hmm. An occasional slap across the snout with a newspaper is strongly advisable at times. I see. Also, always keep a supply of raw meat in your pocket as a reward. <laughs> in case she does something to do. Well, by George, 
And you overheard it all out there on the fire escape? Sure. I got the entire continental technique of lovemaking right from the mademoiselle herself. And you'd be surprised how different it is from the American technique. <laughs> Must be. You say that rolled-up newspaper and raw hamburger you've got there is the key to the whole thing? <laughs> well, I'll be darned. I sure have been traveling with a slow crowd. <laughs> yeah, me too, but no more. I'm going right in now and sweep Mildred off her feet with my new technique. Okay, boy. Good luck to you. Thanks. Here goes. Oh, it's you. I suppose you've come to apologize for the silly way you... You... What are, what are you staring at me that way for? Just checking for fleas and ticks. <laughs> checking for what? It's one of the first precautions. You're okay, though. I don't see anything. What are you talking about? Lie down. <laughs> Lie down, roll over, and play dead. Are you crazy? I'll do no such thing. Okay, then you won't get any hamburger. <laughs> I don't want any hamburger. That's strange. You must be sick. Here, let me feel your nose. You... This. I'm leaving. Down, Mildred. Down, girl. <laughs> Down, I... <laughs> You've gone completely mad, Dennis Day. Gee, I, I guess it's no use. That didn't work either. I'm sorry, Mildred. What, what are you talking about? What didn't work? Well, that technique was supposed to make you fall madly in love with me again. Huh? I learned it from Mademoiselle Delatour. I thought maybe I could win you back from Terry with it. Okay, I give up. Go back to your Terry. Marry him and raise a family. Marry him? Dennis, Terry's a girl. Okay, so marry her and adopt a family. I... <laughs> Terry is a what? A girl. Oh, Dennis, you mean you were jealous because you thought Terry was a boy? Oh, I nearly went crazy. And I thought if I could master the French technique, I'd get you back. You see, in France... Yes, I'm... I know what they do in France. Come here, Dennis. Oh, Mildred, that look in your eye. What are you... No. Help! Wow! Be the first! <laughs> Doctors prove you, too, may win a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, ladies, this is not just a promise, not just a claim, but actual proof. For 36 leading skin specialists prove that a new method of cleansing with palm olive soap, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two out of three women. These tests were made on 1,285 women of all ages, with all types of skin. The doctor's report showed astonishing improvements. Smoother, fresher complexion, less oiliness, New softness for dry skin, fewer tiny blemishes, incipient blackheads, complexions more radiant, glowing. Here's the easy method. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's rich, beautifying lather onto your skin like you would a cream. Then rinse. That's all. It's true. You, too, may have a lovelier complexion in 14 days using palm olive soap, regardless of your age, regardless of your skin type. Start your palm olive facials today. See what palm olive soap can do for your complexion in just 14 days. And for tub or shower, for loveliness all over, get new, big, thrifty, bath size palm olive. With the music of Charles Dant and the orchestra, here's Dennis singing Younger Than Springtime. Touch your hand and my arms grow strong Like a pair of birds that burst with song My eyes look down at your lovely face And I hold the world Warmer than winds of June, or the gentle 
And when you're you and joy invade my arms and fill my heart as now they do, then younger than springtime am I here than laughter. Tune into another Dennis Day show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope for a lovelier, more beautiful complexion. Tonight, your hair can look lovelier after a Lustre Cream shampoo. Lustre Cream, only shampoo in the world which gives you this exclusive blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. For soft, glamorous, caressable hair... Try Luster Cream Shampoo tonight. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. Glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Palm Olive again presents A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. This is Vern Smith speaking. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.